crazy. So hopefully that helps. And, and uh, I have a feeling that I will be putting out a, another video uh, about user management because that, that kind of fits the, the pattern here because it uh, turns out that's what we're going to be talking about today uh, in our integration session. We're going to be talking about user management. So we do have a chapter in all of our books within our book stack documentation uh, for all of our services entitled user management. User management is common across most of our services that are offered under our compose and Bitwarden or yeah, Bitwarden is no exception. Uh, so I broke it up into two sections here. Uh, the first was administrative management and the second was inviting users. So uh, inviting users just turned into such a big um, topic that I wanted to, to cover uh, with a, you know, in, in as much detail as, as I needed to. So I wanted to make sure to split that off. Uh, and then I think, Today, I'm going to start with administrative management and get around to inviting users after I go over uh, what admins can do uh, with users as it is. So Bitwarden has users. Go figure. We've already talked about how the encryption works and, and how everything uh, manages itself. So if if you have a somewhat accurate representation of that held in your mind, you would say, well, what does any administrators need to do with my user? And the answer is not much, uh, but there are a couple things that you can make sure of. So, so backing up a, a little bit here, what I'm going to be covering is actually able to be accessed in the administrators sections or the admin section of Bitwarden. Uh, and you can get to that by appending uh, slash admin uh, to the URL. There's no link, there's no, you know, it doesn't advertise itself, but you can always get to the admin section. So this is something that Vault Warden, uh, as the backend provider, exposes uh, in order to kind of manage the, the, the meta uh, aspects of the server itself. It's almost like a, a server administration. And the, the reason why we started our Compose, uh, well, at least I did, one of the reasons, is I started looking at all these services. I wanted to have a Nextcloud instance. I wanted to uh, you know, spin up different services here and there, but I didn't necessarily want to maintain my own servers. Um, just because I, I already do that, I had plans to, to do other things. And uh, then, then I realized that there's nothing that allows me to really tweak the aspects of the server itself while handling the underlying infrastructure for me. So like all the networking, the backups, the VM updates and stuff like that. All I wanted was really the services, but I also wanted admin privileges on the services. And a lot of what people were selling were going to be a per user basis and a a shared infrastructure, right? Uh, so, so yes, they were MSPs in the sense that they did manage it, uh, but they did not grant that administrative rights in order to really tweak and uh, like even applications in Nextcloud. I had a preset of applications that were installed, and I didn't have rights to install any further. So I'm I'm sitting here like, well, that that doesn't. Right. That defeats right. the entire purpose, right? Nextcloud has so many different applications, and you're telling me I can't even I can't even add stuff on there, um, much less you know edit the the time that you know my calendar is going to sync because like by default, and and this is something I implemented recently too, is that uh, I changed if you're running the calendar plugin, if you have external calendars that you're subscribed to, by default it syncs like once a day or more it, it could be like once every other day or something like that i'm like no i i add or remove all the time. stuff from my schedule yeah. all the time i need it to reflect that up to date so i changed it to something like every 20 minutes or something but that was like an occ command i had to run in in the back end right and that was something i had to to run um conditionally if that application was installed. So I had to install the application. I had to tweak the application and, and I was able to do that all with administrator privileges, right? Which I could not have done on any of the hosted services that I had previously researched. So 
empowering people to be able to manage their services with that kind of power, right? And and don't get me wrong, this is the power to mess things up, right? And I was actually just thinking about this too, and I was like, well, we should probably expose the ability to create a snapshot and roll right. back like that. That may be a good next script to uh, to integrate into Portal. So if you want to do something dangerous, you know, take a snapshot first so you can have a oh, have a quick yeah. rollback there. But but like like it exposing this administrative function. This isn't something that bit. Bitwarden.com provides you. This isn't something that, you know, a managed service provider like that would, you know, where, where they're using shared hosting would provide you. This is something that you can really only have if you're running your own instance. And this kind of hybrid managed service uh, that, that are compose, uh, the, the, the company, you know, compositional enterprises, what, what we host, right? We're able to expose this so you can have as much power and flexibility as you want. Now, really was it, what it does isn't, isn't a whole lot, uh, to, to actually walk through what it does. It, it, it gives us a, a user section in the administration page and you can see a, a, a couple of things. Um, in, in this kind of table from left to right, you know, just to, to name off what, what we have here, uh, we have name and status, um, status being like invited or verified, um, potentially disabled as well. Uh, it shows you the date that the account was created. It, uh, importantly actually shows you the date it was last active. So that, that's interesting as well. One of our accounts here has actually never been active because it's like the bot user account. So it's like sure, we never right. use it to log in. Uh, that and which could change, but you know, right now, the last active is never. Whereas I can see both you and I have have been active very recently, uh, and a couple different uh, blocks of information here, notably items, uh, which. Could be, you know, that's that's any of your logins or cards or identities or secure notes. Interestingly enough, though, it actually excludes all the items that are shared with an organization. So, like, if we look at the the screenshot that we have in our documentation, uh, between Jack and I, we both have five items to our to our names a piece. Uh, I know for a fact I have like fifty some entries in my vault, but all those are shared in our organization. So actually the organization is the owner of those items, not either of our personal accounts. So it doesn't count against either of our personal accounts items. So it actually shows us having very, very <laughs> few items when in fact those are like probably the items we set and totally forgot about because we don't even use them or something like that. But, uh, but it does exclude all the items that are shared with an organization. And we'll go to organization in a second. Um, there is also a organization column here uh, that gives us uh, the link to what organization we're a part of. Uh, and this can actually be edited from here, like actually selecting that organization. You can select uh, what role in that organization the user has. The user can be changed from a owner to a manager, manager to user, whatever the, the four tiers are there. Lastly, there are actions and actions can be one of deauthorized session, delete user or disable user. Uh, note that deauthorized sessions will not prompt for confirmation. The delete user and disable user, however, will. So the deauthorized session, I believe that's all of the sessions that have been are syncing currently, which it keeps track of uh, as we went over how it does its live syncing. All of those uh, sessions would be deauthorized at that point, which which means they would have to be reauthorized. Uh, so you can you can do a, a couple of things with users. It's mainly managing the users that are currently there, uh, and and kicking the ones out that you don't sure. want in there right. anymore uh, because from your regular user role, all you can see is all your stuff, right? And the organization that you're right. a part of, right? And you can manage organizations um, by going to that organization page, but you can't manage like the user's actual, like if someone signed up for my instance, I don't want signed up for my instance. How do I, how do I tell them no, right? How do I, how do I kick them out? This page is where you would do that. This page is where you'd go to kick them out. 
Uh, and there is also uh, organizations that can be managed from the next tab uh, over. There are five in the administrative section. So uh, hopping over to organizations from users, we can see that the organizations here, uh, it's even more bare bones than the users. Really, the only actionable item here is the ability to delete scary, the organization. Yep, um, it's there. You can do it. You can do it for sure. Um, and that's that's really all I have for management because a lot of it, like like we've gone over, a lot of it is self-contained, right? A lot of it is just what you're going to be managing with your own account and through your own organizations with, with other users. The interesting thing comes uh, when we talk about inviting users. So if you want to share a password with someone, you're going to want to invite them onto your Bitwarden instance. Now we, we went over previously, you know, how to, uh, how to use Bitwarden send right, if someone is not on your instance, but if you want someone on your instance, how do you do that? The trick here is figuring out how to actually get to the place to send the invite. So there, there are two locations here where you can actually invite a user. The first one is in the global admin users page, the one we were just talking about, the one accessed in the slash admin URL with the admin token. That that page at the very bottom has an invite user section where you can enter someone's email and invite them. Now, this is going to be important in like two sections later that I'm going to go over. So in probably about three minutes, but the invite user, the primary function of that is if you are hooked up with an SMTP server, that will then send out an invite link uh, to whatever email that you put in there. Uh, and I think we may have one more Bitwarden talk uh, around advanced customization as far as including an SMTP server because there are a couple cool things here like email and password hints and inviting users and uh, a couple other things that uh, would be really nice with an SMTP server. If we don't end up doing that, then there is... Just under the general settings, there's a place where you can put in your SMTP server uh, information. And that is like any other service where you would hook it up to an SMTP server. You know, what's the server name, user, authorization, you know, and, and uh, et cetera, et cetera, in order to send email through that server. Uh, so because Bitwarden itself doesn't have an uh, email server and we don't start off right. with one instantiated. So inviting a user just kind of creates that user account uh, or creates an invite for that user account more accurately. And that's going to be important in a second here. Uh, I did also want to mention, however, that an organization admin or owner uh, in the manage section of the organization can also invite a user, right? So that is the same type of invite that an admin can use. And that's kind of probably going to be easier. And and honestly, it's going to be a little bit more sane because if you're going to invite someone to your instance, it's probably because right. you want to share a password with them. And if you want to share a password with them, the way you do that is with organizations. So probably the, the, the easiest, most sane way to invite someone in is to invite them into your organization. Now, you can also invite, a, this is also how you invite users into your organization that are already on your Bitwarden instance. Uh, and I actually do go through that in the previous video, uh, how to invite to an organization and accepting that invite and approving, conf confirming um, the, the, the user into that organization. So uh, go ahead and go to YouTube if you don't understand how to do that. But that will also invite uh, users that are on the instance as well into that organization. Uh, so the the first question I put here in the, the, the next section is as far as inviting users, right, is how do invited users sign up? Well, 
that, as we said, depends on the SMTP server, right? If you do receive an email, uh, you'll get that message inviting them right. to the instance, right? They'll get that message inviting them to the instance. Uh, if the SMTP server is not set up, which is by default, uh, they are available to sign up on the regular create account screen, right? Because that is enabled by default. Now, the next question that logically comes up is what if registrations are disabled? Uh, and, and I'm going to quote directly from the wiki here. Uh, Even when registration is disabled, organization administrators or owners can invite users to join an organization. Uh, this also goes the same for admins, global admins. After they are invited, they can register with the invited email. So if you say, I'm going to invite Bob at rcompose.com. By the way, I hope we never have to onboard anyone named Bob because I use it in so many different examples that it would just get confusing. I'd have to name him Bob <laughs> too or something like that. So after we invite Bob at rcompose.com, even if we have registrations disabled, which to walk through that workflow is if you go into the create account screen and you try to create an account when registrations are disabled, you can fill out everything. The button's still active. It'll take you still to that page. You can fill out everything. You try to submit and it says this user is already active or registrations are disabled. And I was like, well, could we, could we get a <laughs> which one better? Which one? Uh, but they're not going to tell you which one. They're just going to say no. So uh, you will you will see that pop up if registrations are disabled, except in the case that the email that you're trying to register with is one that had previously been invited. So whatever the organization admin invites, if they do end up inviting Bob at rcompose.com, when Bob goes to the registration, the create account, and he creates that account. When when Bob goes and creates that account on the registration account screen, he will then be able to to fill that out and it will not show the error and actually it will it will go through that that registration will go through. So this invite functionality bypasses disabling registrations on the instance. Um, and how do you change invites? Um, the invitation organization name can be changed. Um, so like when you send out the email, what does it say there? And invitations in general can be allowed slash disallowed on the settings admin page. And on disallowing, excuse me, disallowing those invitations will prevent that behavior that we were just talking about when a user is invited, right? So as a global admin, if you don't want any of your organization right. admins to invite users, you can uncheck this and then they will not be able to invite any users. And even, you know, you're trying to fail. do that, that user that they tried to okay. invite was going to fail. Exactly. And that makes sense, though. I mean, you probably don't want someone creating an organization out there and then just going out and as, as an admin of that group and just sending everyone and their mother invites to this instance and when it comes to that you know i think it's going to end up being real realistically speaking it's going to end up being you know your global admin is actually going to be similar to your org admin for the kind of instances we're spinning up at this point in time now down the road it, it could definitely get into that structure where it's like all right well i'm the i'm going to be the owner of this bitwarden application and i'm going to be the global admin for it and i have you know so let's say finance, marketing, whoever being actual owners of their organization. Now you don't want your finance department going off and just sending invites to anyone who's anybody. So you're probably, I don't know. It sounds like this is a global setting at this point in time, but it'd be interesting to see it scoped uh, for maybe different organizations. And I, I doubt that's going to be down the road, but it would be some, it's just a, it's a cool feature, right? It's a cool feature. So. Yeah, and it, at least, like I said, yeah, the, the the global admin, uh, it, you can really right. do whatever you want right. with your instance, and and this is just another just way, uh, another thing to be aware of, and to say, hey, you should you should be aware that that you can disallow invitations if that's something you would like to yeah. do. Same way that you can disallow account creation and, and sign up. Yeah, which is a uh, 
kind of a big one out there. I'll tell you that. Um, I mean, a- after after going through Bitwarden, and, and they do actually say it on the the wiki. You know, the the what is this threat vector? Why should I care? Yada yada really, yada. You mentioned the one, and it's space. It floating file. Yeah, it's space, and 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 there's there's really nothing else. Uh, they they downplay it as well. Uh, that, however, I mean, that, that may be something that I want to do, right. And, and say, look, whoever signs up, invite whoever you want, um, or change signups to, to be active. That may be a, a default that we change, uh, as, as a result of this discussion. And, you know, I'm more than willing to change stuff to make it saner, to make it more secure. And if we do, you'll hear about it on this podcast. 